Hello and welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for April of 2023. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julian Mikos, and I'm in San Francisco, California. Okay, let's take a look at what's happening in April. Hey Capricorn, let's start with Ceres. Ceres is retrograde right now, and I think you're really going to want to know about this for two reasons. One is that well, the Capricorns of the world are known for their ability to build wealth, uh, even if that seems hard when you first start out. Uh, but also, and Ceres is all about wealth building, believe me, but also because Ceres is traveling through your ninth house and she loves to be there. This is like her favorite house to be in. Now, it is a retrograde journey, but, um, but I think that you're going to actually really like this particular retrograde journey. So Ceres is um, about the things that connect us to the physical world, our bodies, uh, the food that we eat, um, the ways that we handle survival and abundance, and most particularly money and wealth building. Ceres started her retrograde journey in February in the sign of Libra, and so we dubbed this a financial rebalancing period, which goes on from early February to early May, so for several months. And we're all feeling this in one way or another, that it's time to really look into our finances to fix some stuff that might be broken, whether that is in terms of uh, how you handle your money, how you run your money, uh, how you earn it, <clears throat> spend it, save it, invest it, uh, but also how you organize it. And I think that is what really comes up when Ceres retrogrades into Virgo, which is where she is now. So she went retrograde in Libra over here in your 10th house and has moved back into the ninth house here in Virgo. And so this Ceres retrograde really wants you to get more organized with your finances. But, and here's the part I think you're really going to like, while Ceres is in the ninth house, she is feeling very expansive. And this is just the absolute best transit for not just, you know, getting into those spreadsheets and, and like, you know, organizing your filing structure or setting up your online banking to be just the way you want it. It's not just about those Virgo things. It is about ninth house things, which is to say the beliefs that you have about money and whether you deserve money based on the value you bring to the world. So Ceres retrograde in your ninth house wants you to expand your ability to receive and be a channel for abundance to move through the world. And so this is a really, really great transit for just re-examining, you know, like, what do you actually believe about money? Do you believe that you deserve it? Do you not believe that you deserve it? Do you believe that you deserve it only if you work super hard and like, you know, um, like die, you know, die on that battlefield. Uh, so figure it out and, uh, and readjust your beliefs about money, uh, using affirmations if necessary, or visualization or some, you know, new agey tool like that. And, uh, this could be a wonderful transit with great results. Okay. The other thing I want to talk about right now is Juno. She starts the month here. Uh, let's go to I'm in the wrong month here. April 1st. Yes. Juno starts the month here in your fifth house. And Juno is very much the relator, the partner, and she's a matchmaker too, and a networker. So wherever Juno goes, she brings up themes of relationship and partnership. And um, when Juno arrives in your fifth house, uh, because Juno is the archetypal spouse, it's really time to have fun with your partner. Now that can mean uh, fun with your spouse if you have one or your long-term relationship partner. Um, and, and that means that this is, it's time, you know, to just 
go back to having fun, like take a little trip, like have a little vacation, like um, invite people over to play games in the evening, like, you know, play that game that your partner likes that you don't necessarily like and, and really have fun with them, you know, with what is fun for them and, uh, and stretch yourself that way. That's a really great way to spend this transit. And also, if you don't have a spouse, but you have a business partner, this is signal, you know, that like it's time to just go out and have a couple of beers with your business partner and reestablish the fun side of your connection with that person. And if you don't have a fun side with that person, you should get one. Um, Juno is going to leave Taurus and enter Gemini on uh, May 1st uh right about here but i'm going to talk about that next month when it's a little bit more present hey julia hmm. what's up with mercury venus and mars for the capricorns of the world well we got to start with mercury because mercury is going to go retrograde this month i know we've had a, a break from retrograde season but it's definitely back uh and the first couple of days mercury spends in your fourth house so mercury represents your mind and the fourth house is the past so for the first couple of days of april you might be very preoccupied with the past you know thinking about things from a long time ago and how it's affecting you now but by april 3rd mercury goes into your fifth house this is a house of fun games creativity and kids uh so uh you know at that point your mind has shifted from past matters to just having a little bit more fun you know mercury is kind of a trickster planet you know um the fifth house is a house of games so maybe if there are games in your life you like video games um if you like board games if you like gambling uh your mind is just really preoccupied with some fun or maybe just um you know thinking about creating creative projects too. Now by April 21st, Mercury will go retrograde in this house and it's going to stretch on till about mid-May. So by the end of the month, we're going to have a lot of reviewing in terms of the fifth house. So what does that mean? Well, if you have a kid, this could be a time of miscommunications with the kid or maybe miscommunications about having children. You know, mm -hmm. maybe this is maybe not the best month to try to figure it out with your partner because, you know, you guys might get a little, you might confuse each other. Um, and uh, Mercury retrograde in the fifth house, if you're actively dating, because this is the house of dating, you might change your mind one two three or four times about somebody you're dating so don't make any permanent commitments or think oh i definitely like this person i definitely don't like this person you know until maybe after the retrograde season because you might change your mind then venus starts the month in this house too really nice to have venus in here as well for the first 10 days of the month because she brings pleasure she brings fun and 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 socializing so a good time to socialize with your kids early this month even though the miscommunication might crop up later um also great dating transit at the beginning of the month um but again like i said hold off before you make up your mind about someone maybe until mm -hmm. late may um and venus in the fifth is great for any types of creative projects you want to do then by the 10th it enters your sixth house of work and health you just want to gonna get down into your uh spring cleaning during this time because the six houses are routines it's getting everything organized and venus is going to bring a little pleasure to what is for most people not the most pleasurable activity um this is a great transit for getting along well at your workplace maybe getting a little work luck you know maybe a little recognition maybe a little bit of um, harmony at the workplace and it can be nice for health you know it can be a very very good period um especially if you're doing things to support your health like you know eating well um and you know getting some exercise you might get a little more pleasure from those things but venus does like to indulge um so you know that that's also a factor now finally mars mars is in your seventh house of partnership all all month so even though it's a good time for dating early on you still might run into some arguments um along the way with mars in the seventh because the seventh house is one-to-one -one relationship so again uh this is another reason not to make up your mind about anyone for for a little while um and uh, if you are in a committed relationship then you and your partner you might be feeling like the different 
differences between you and your partner. You know, like how when we first fall in love, everything about you and them seems the same. And then as you get to know each other over a long period of time, you start noticing the differences. Mars really makes you kind of feel like this is me versus this is them. Um, and uh, if you do need to hire any contractors, you might need some second opinions later, or they might frustrate the heck out of you. Um, so one thing you can do uh, with Mars in the seventh house is to engage in a joint project, um, maybe with your partner, for example. Uh, this would be a great time to like go for a jog together, especially because Venus will be in your sixth house of wanting to support yourself from good health routines. Maybe a hike together. Just be like, honey, we need to get off the couch. We need to do something physical. Um, Mars in the seventh is excellent for that. Mm, so true. Hi, Jamie here. Before we continue, I just want to take a quick moment to thank you for watching this video. And if you're enjoying this content, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Our lowest tier starts at just $5 a month and gives you early access to these monthly horoscope readings. Your support helps keep this content free. The link can be found in the description box below. Thanks again, and let's get back to the video. Well, we've got a couple of moons to look at, beginning on April 5th with this full moon in Libra, which lands right in your 10th house Capricorn. And that's a pretty important domain. That's the domain of career and authority. And um, this full moon in Libra opposes several planets in Aries, which are kind of like a bunch of, you know, boisterous puppies, if you will. Um, very sort of bouncy, but also rather clueless. And those are in your fourth house. And so this moon in Libra, which is trying to be diplomatic and nice and, and trying to be relatable and personable and thoughtful about other people, is kind of trying to wrestle these, um, these unruly Aries planets into shape. So because the moon appears in your 10th house, you might notice yourself, you know, um, feeling pulled to be that diplomatic self in your in your career arena, in your place of work, and uh, and to make yourself, you know, look good as an authority. You're going to want to be um, that, you know, more personable and relatable side. But because of these unruly planets here in the fourth house hugging at that moon, you might find that your home life is a little a little crazy, a little rambunctious uh, with some people there in your home that that might be um, making you feel a little bit like undermined uh, in your ability to show up well at work. We're calling this moon make every action wholesome uh, because it's really a great opportunity for healing through honesty, but that does have to be done in a way that is delicate and thoughtful. Uh, the other moon that I want to tell you about is um, even more interesting because it is an eclipse. It is a solar eclipse that lands right here in Aries in your fourth house. And there's a lot to this eclipse. And it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty stressful eclipse too, because it features a T-square with several other planets. Uh, fortunately, there is some help from Saturn. Saturn has the reins on this eclipse. Um, but it does uh, carry forward some of that rem rambunctious feel of the earlier moon this month, and it does land in your fourth house. Now, we're calling this eclipse Volcanic Actions Tempered by Sympathy, and, um, and that's because a solar eclipse shows us our shadow. Our shadow uh, gives us, like, shadow in the Jungian sense, you know, like, our shadow is the stuff that we don't like to look at every day that we kind of prefer to remain unconscious of. But during eclipses, it has a way of getting right in our face. And solar eclipses will show us our shadow through how we behave. And so um, really pay attention to your behavior in your home life during this eclipse, because you might have some bad behavior, family members might have some bad behavior, and it might really reveal uh, something about yourself that um, that you don't look at every day. This is a this powerful. This eclipse is really really powerful for evolving uh, because it's also a, a north node eclipse. It's placed at the north node, and I strongly recommend that you check this eclipse out on our 
uh, website's forecast page. So at pandoraastrology.com, uh, go to the forecast and check out the two videos about these two moons, but most especially this eclipse. And then the last thing I want to tell you about is the seasonal change, which happens on the 20th. And you can see that the sun is here in Aries on the 19th. And by the 20th, it moves on into Taurus right here and uh, into your fifth house. Now, in the beginning of the month, there was a lot of activity here in Aries. And so your fourth house was very, very emphasized. And that, of course, as we've been saying, is home and family, the domestic front, if you will. And, um, and so this area of life has had your attention, lots of attention going into your home life. And as the sun moves on into the fifth house, you can see that there's really an overall migration of many planets over into the fifth house, sh shifting the emphasis uh, and the theme of this month out of home and family and instead into fun and play and uh, and children and being childlike which i mean in the best possible sense now i also think of this as a house of your personal brand this is a house of creativity and self-expression uh, this is a house where we figure out who we are and project that out into the world and so when this house is really full, and especially when the sun is here, is a really good time to like, you know, uh, change your profile picture on your social media, for example, and to, um, to be creative, to express yourself, to perform yourself into the world, and to get a better idea of who you really are. And with the sun here in particular, you want to shine the nourishing sunlight of your high quality attention into this area, which means um, looking inside yourself and asking yourself, who am I really? And then bringing that authentic self out and showing it to the world, potentially through uh, actions that you take or through creative projects that you do, for example. And really, if you have a pretty clear sense of who you are, then you could just spend the month playing, playing with your kids if you have some, or your nieces and nephews if you don't. And um, this is just a fun and lovely 30-day uh, period that happens every year for you. If you love Pandora Astrology's free and informative horoscopes, please do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share our horoscopes with your friends. We make these horoscopes for you for free, and if you appreciate it, supporting us on Patreon is the best way to show it. Share our horoscopes with your friends, too. Have a beautiful April, and until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye.